process of uh, creating a rigid body trebuchet or also known as a catapult. Now this right here it's completely controlled by the physics engine. I have a counterweight right here, the swinging arm, and a projectile which is just a generic cube at this point. This counterweight is held on to the end of this swinging arm by a hinge constraint and this swinging arm is held on to the basically the stand or whatever you want to call it by a hinge constraint. Right now this cube weighs, let's see, I only have it set to 10 kilograms and this right here, the counterweight weighs 100 kilograms but the counterweight is basically pulling on this small of a lever while the cube is on a really long lever. So realistically this counterweight isn't hardly heavy enough to even lift this because of the difference in the leverage. If I press play it's just barely pulling it down and when the it gets to the top the cube comes out and it just kind of falls. So this is kind of um, a test of how strong these constraints can be and how heavy this has to be in order to launch a projectile. Because my idea is I want to, be able to use this to launch a projectile to break down a Keva Plank style building. Now generally my Keva Planks weigh about 10 kilograms a piece. So this is going to have to weigh at least 100 kilograms in order to start tearing down a building. So obviously with this weighing 10 kilograms and this weighing 100 kilograms, 100 kilograms is not enough. So I'm going to raise this to let's say 200 kilograms. I'm just doubling it to see how stable it is. And it should throw it a little bit at this weight. but kind of straight down. Alright, see I, I think I have a little bit of an issue too. I need the trebuchet to stop at some point, probably about this angle. So what I need to do is select this constraint and put a z-axis limit on it and I think I need to, I think this needs to be around 10 if I got, got my orientations correct in my head. Alright, let's try this. If 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 it's correct, I think it should be 10 degrees off from 90 degrees straight up, I believe. Let me click play. Well, that didn't work. Okay, I'm clearly off on that, so let me try minus 10. Okay, minus is the correct direction, but I need it to be, I believe, minus 80 now. Let's try it one more time. Okay, that's about what I'm looking for right there. I may try 85, minus, minus 85. Get a little bit more straight up and down. All right, that's, that's about right. All right, now let me go ahead and click save because I don't want to lose this work because when you start changing a bunch of stuff, sometimes it wants to crash, especially with physics. All right, now let's increase the weight of this again. Let's go ahead and double it to 400. And we'll see how stable this is. It seemed pretty stable. Huh, that's actually working better than I thought it was going to. Let's double it again. Let's just, well, let's just go ahead and raise it up to a thousand. So that it's literally 100 times the weight of the cube. That's actually got pretty good distance on it. Let's see how heavy we can actually get this. Um, let's just bring it up to 10,000. Because if it's stable here, then the physics I have set up is 
working really, really good. Oh, see, it's a little glitchy. Oh. Alright, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the physics issue I was talking about. Watch how the hinge isn't quite holding it correctly. It's kind of working. So what that tells me is I need to raise the solver iterations. Now, I'm just going, let me, let me double check, see if this one is bouncing or getting elastic. It isn't, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to raise the solver iterations on this particular constraint. Override solver iterations, and I'm going to set this to, let's say, 100. And then I'll try it one more time. Okay, now this one's getting elastic. So, let me go ahead and choose, uh, man, I think I moved it. I did. Let me go ahead and change this one to 100 also. Because my understanding is this is sort of like subframes, but specifically for the constraints. All right, let me try it. Oh, crashed, which that that is why um, I like to save. Now, I have everything pretty much set up the same. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up to 10,000 like I had it before. And I'm going to zoom in, set this one, override uh, 100, select this one. Override 100, 100, and now I'm going to click File, Save. That way I don't miss out or lose it. Let me see if those still get spongy. This one's still a little spongy. Let me tr let me see if I can adjust that one. Let me bring this up to 1,000. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to 1000 as well and before I click play because since I clicked play before and it crashed I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna make sure the cache is reset by just changing the sub steps to 11 all right that worked perfectly as far as the uh, sponginess Go back, watch it one more time. It didn't look like it had any sponginess, which I think that means that we're ready to see how well this it launches that cube at this uh, weight. It should launch it pretty good. Play. Now that's got some good distance to it. That'll work. Now if I want to change the angle of which it comes off, all I have to do, if, like if I wanted to lob it up higher, I'll have to select the hinge constraint for the arm and then go to the physics properties. And if I wanted to release, you know, at a higher angle, I set this down to, say, minus 75. Now I'm going to click save just because I don't want to lose anything at this point. All right, which means the arm should swing less further this way, and it should release at more of an angle. And I go ahead and click play, more of an angle, goes up higher. That's got good distance. Yeah, that right there is getting pretty close to what I need. I'm going to change this to 70, minus 70, and we'll try it one more time. click play all right now it reached a point to where it's not getting as much distance because the arm isn't swinging as fast because it has less time to pick up speed all right so that means once again I'm gonna select this counterweight and I'm gonna set this to 20,000 all right click file save because it's getting kind of sketchy in terms of how stable it's going to be click play 
All right, we got our distance back. Yeah, there we go. That's that's pretty close. Now, but the, now we're running into the issue. This right here is only 10 kilograms. Let me raise this to 100 because 100 is what I need. Because it's going to take pretty much one. Well, let me first zoom in. See if anything's kind of unstable. File, save, play. Now that's an issue. That's probably not enough uh, sub steps. So let me change this to 20. Click play one more time, or save one more time, then click play. Okay, that's don't have quite as much distance as I would like. Let me change this up to 40 and we'll see what because it looked a little unstable right here. Let's see what that looks like. Still kind of looks a little unstable but not bad. Alright now uh, there's one more. Th oh yeah. I want to go ahead and adjust this one more time since we multiplied the weight of this one by 10 I want to raise the weight of that one just a little bit more I'm bringing it up to 50 I mean you're talking a 50,000 kilogram counterweight the physics are a little wonky but yeah I click play all right, now we got good distance. It actually seemed a little bit more stable at that weight. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. I'm going to go ahead and click save and end this video. Later, people.